Welcome to Fashion Week International, a new show that reports on the most fabulous fashion weeks in the world and the culture and politics behind them. This time, we headed out to the wild west of the East, Cambodia. It's the crack of dawn on the back of a cattle truck in the outskirts of Phnom Penh. This is a typical daily commute for the 400,000 female garment factory workers of Cambodia. Despite the fact that the garment industry represents 80% of Cambodia's export revenue, these girls work six days a week for only $2 a day, until, in some cases, they quite literally faint. We were here for the first ever Cambodia Fashion Week. Not that that meant anything to the girls on the back of this truck. Cambodia used to be a liberal, peace-loving country where miniskirt-clad girls bopped to the sounds of psych pop. That was until Pol Pot's Khmer Rouge not only destroyed the agricultural industry, but also wiped out every Cambodian artist and intellectual, leading to a creative brain drain that left a cultural black hole. Until now. 30 years on, the Cambodian people are beginning to forge a creative path of their own. It was in this climate the country felt it was ready to host its first ever Fashion Week. We're outside this art gallery in downtown Phnom Penh with tuk-tuks around us everywhere and in there is the makings of a fashion show by designer Don Prestazio. I don't know, it's, it's not Prestazio, what is it? What's your full name Don? Don Prestazio. Where are you from? From the Philippines. You know, when you think about Cambodia, you don't think about, you know, fashion week. But Cambodia is like, there's a fashion scene going on. It's not relevant for the world, but for us here, it's relevant enough. No. How many model? 18, right? So, yeah. yeah. When did you first start wearing makeup for yourself? Since I'm 13. Yes. Who are your influences? I look at Madonna music video. Do you have one music video in particular? Walk. Walk? Yeah. I don't know that one. V O G E C something walk. Vogue? I thought you said walk, walk like walk. No, not walk. But you mean Sorry. Vogue like... Walk. Yes, yes. Can you Vogue? Yes. Do it. No, Show no. me. Backstage is like a box room. It's quite full on. They've got their mouths covered. It's kind of quite military. They've been instructed that they have to look stoned. We'll see how that pans out. How do you feel? Yeah, it's amazing. It's yeah? amazing, yeah. Have you ever worn heels before? Never. But it's amazing for me. Oh, come on. I, I enjoy the show, I enjoy the clothes, everything it was great. It was really great. It was an intriguing start to the fashion week, a bold, conceptual performance art style show where the models practically sleepwalked. It wasn't yet clear who Don Protasio's market was, but at least his loyal, all-black-clad entourage were there for support. We all know that Cambodia is one of the third world countries. This fashion week, it means that they're moving forward not only in terms of political situation or the economic situation, but as well as fashion. And even the high-class Cambodians were here and they liked it. The higher classes he was referring to are otherwise affectionately known by the local press as the Khmer Rish, the sons and daughters of rich and powerful government officials. As well as being fabulously rich, they were also surprisingly camp, but not nearly as camp as the after party. The Blue Chili Bar is run by Fashion Week's head makeup artist, Oak Chan. As it was Halloween, we were told to expect something scary. The elite fashion crowd bailed and the vibe gave way to a different form of creative expression, appealing mainly to the white expats in the mood for love. How many beautiful Cambodian Chinese can you fit in a tip trip? What are your names? My name is Sunny Ben by them. 
history. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me, this is your bar? Yes, my name is Oak. Yeah. And I'm from Memory, Barbara. And you yeah. perform, I don't know what song you perform. And how do you feel on the bar dancing? Uh, for me, I'm, I'm feel so happy when uh, I can dance for my customer. When my customer is like this, I'm so happy for them. Every week, I do something best for them. She can't go back to the business. Yes, she would like to meet all the <laughs> Not <laughs> <my> <laughs> Having had our first taste of Fashion Week, we were keen to look into the other side of Cambodian fashion, the garment industry. We went to meet Peng Chu, former garment worker and union leader, to hear about some of the recent issues facing the workers. <laughs> ຈ້າພວກຍົ້ມມາເຖີບປະຕິກຳເອີ້ຊື່ຈໍາເພີນບົງຄືມີກໍາກໍຈໍານວນແຖມພວກນີ້ກວດມາເອົາຕັ້
No one was willing to talk outside the factory, so we decided to try and hitch a ride with a group of girls on their way back to their villages. We're meant to get on a truck. Everyone's staring at me because I'm a monster, I'm a giant. But to be honest, my main concern now is not getting run over and um, <laughs> finding the fucking truck. We finally found the truck. Apparently it's packed, so I don't even know if we're going to fit on, but I don't give a shit. I'll fucking cling on by my little toes. Oh. Oh. Can we fit on? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Who do we know on this bus? So within two minutes of being on this bus, we've managed to find a girl who works in a factory. And she has to leave for work to get back at seven, which makes me think that we're going to be on this thing for two hours, not one. I already need a wee. I keep on trying to ask questions, but I keep getting smacked in the head by bits of twig. No. Are they happy? Okay, I'm going to get down here. We're getting off. Thank you. Bye. We are somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Look, bushes, jungle, dirt road. Okay, you lead the way. Thank you so much. How long have your family lived here? And how many of you are there? By and Does she have a day off from the factory? Who built the house? And whose clothes are these? Oh. Is it 
So this is her favourite yeah. outfit. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand what this what this means? Can you tell her what it means? <laughs> Why does she like it? Like boy, like like so. Not understand. No. Do you know what Fashion Week is? No. No. Yeah. How old were you when you started working? Yeah. She should just be starting work now. Yeah. 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 And did your friends faint? Mean มีรอมเวียนกาลําบากแต่บ่ซั่นเจียมันรอบ้านไอ้จําโกนพี่ออดญมชีวิตរបស់ញោមញុំចង់ <laughs> <laughs> This is chili and the place I get about it. I don't know, I forget it. Who is the cook? Father. Father. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet dreams. So now everyone's gone to bed. We're still wide awake. We've got to try and get some sleep because we're going to get up with them at five o'clock. Um, in order to be back at the factory for seven. It's been so amazing. They've brought us back here and they've shared with us the little that they had. We had you know, a traditional meal with them. Then they tried to offer us up their beds, which we refused. So we're sleeping outside, but it's a small price to pay to kind of get an insight into their story. slept a wink. Um, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> so I just feel completely mad and I can barely walk because my legs are so swollen with mosquito bite. Um, I think we have to be a bit quicker. I'd really like to clean myself. So last night when it was revealed to me that the young girl who we stayed with was only 14 when she started work, it does make me wonder how old most of these girls are on this truck. Because honestly to me they look like babies. I'm <laughs> 
กระแดงบ้านยัวจันชาวสีใสที่ว่าเรียนตรอบNo sooner had the truck stopped, s r e y and the other girls disappeared into the crowd. We didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. And that's it. They've gone in. They've gone in to work, not school. They're not learning anything. They're going to make jeans for the likes of you and me to wear. When I think of that girl standing in there, working the machines or whatever it is that goes on behind those gates, in her Berlin Fashion Week jumper. Nor without even knowing what a fashion week is, and then I think of all the high fashion designers collecting their praise and champagne and flowers for their latest collection. It doesn't add up. Cambodia Fashion Week continued in full swing, as the well-heeled crowd moved from one exclusive venue to another. And before we knew it, the week was almost up. Given that there is no Cambodian equivalent to Rodeo Drive, I was curious to find out where the rich girls went to get their frocks. Sophie and Sina is a five-story fashion mansion, complete with a relaxing shoe garden, wine cellar, tailoring room, and fashion magazine. All this is owned by 23-year-old Sophie Key. Daughter of the deputy prime minister and head of the Cambodia Fashion Council, the place was empty. Not a soul came in the whole time we were there. However, as inappropriate as I felt this place was, I couldn't help but be seduced by this confection. You never know when a giant Barbie dress might come in handy. <laughs> We went to check out another very different type of fashion show being put on by local girl Rina. Rina, sorry, you look busy. I just know today about like one thirty, and it just start now. Rina grew up on the street before working in a garment factory and learning English on her lunch breaks. Since then, she's gone on to open her own business, a cafe cum bespoke fashion boutique. Who are your favorite designers? <laughs> to be honest, I don't know any name of Western the designer or Cambodia. I don't know at all. So, so everything you do just comes out of your head. Yeah, just come out of my head. I just want to do like something strange, weird, you know, like um, to do like uh, <laughs> like a wing. Yeah. Yeah, but I make from this. I don't know. Like, for example, this is the cây trăng hoa tha. Ah, thiệp này bản đất màu bì. Này, màu bì, màu dương, dương của mẹ nữa. This is the ring made from the plastic bag that you only throw on the street and I take it to make a ring. To be honest, it's very mm. embarrassing. When I go to school, they say uh, they say not let them to play with me because I'm a the busted girl. So I know have parents and I'm poor and they they don't want the kid play with me. And also they just said to my my mom said like, oh you poor and your kid poor you know when your kid your girl grow up she just a prostitute on the street. Maybe they just pay one a l l o w a n c they can fuck her. They said it to me. That is make me to be stronger and I want my life better. This is I remember the whole until now. That's why I have this idea. And I always want to do it, but actually, I support to say thank you that people talk like that to me, make me stronger. Yeah, make me not. No, I have to fight. I'm not let you look down at me. I have to stand up and fight. This is not fight like you kill them. Not fight like to show what I can do. Yeah. See you in the market. See you in the market. You have to follow me. Here we are. The, we're at the market where Rena's models are going to get made up. Hi, models. Hi. 
So the 1960s, that was a good time in Cambodia. Yeah, I like 1960 so I love it so much. Even style. 1970 is Khmer Rouge. They kill like rich people and clever people. And then we don't have song for a long time. So you're trying to sort of remember that time. Yeah. <laughs> We have too many plastic bags so in the city everywhere. Why do you not use it? As Rena's models paraded around in her DIY creations, we wondered why more people like Rena hadn't been included in the fashion week. After all, if recycled trash is good enough for Comme des Garçons, why aren't you showing at the fashion week? I told you to be honest. Oh, the people go there, you know, where it's from is white people and Philippines and just rich people. It's not poor people to go. Yeah. The final show of the week was by Remy Hu, Cambodian-born designer now living in LA. To my combined surprise and delight, I'd been asked to walk in his show. I wasn't off to a good start and arrived late. All the models were dressed and ready to go, but there were bigger problems than me squeezing into my dress on time. It's raining. Yes. Is the show meant to be outside? Yes. We had all this, we had all this, but it's raining, it's wet, and this is what you get out when it's raining and it's wet. We take it indoors and we respect. Let's do this. And it's the same old song. We haven't even had a rehearsal, and I, I haven't been styled yet. Yeah, we're gonna take her and get the line on her, but uh, it must be done. I have no idea what we're doing. I have no idea. I'm gonna fuck it up. And now I have a prop. What do I do with my prop? I'm not nervous. I just don't want to fuck his show up. <laughs> This was one of the more unnecessarily theatrical shows I've come across. The whole thing was suspect briefcases, handcuffs and fugitives. But to be honest, I was more concerned about getting the bloody umbrella open at the end of the runway. With caution. After the show, I changed into my Sophie and Cena party frock, hoping this might help clinch an interview with Sophie He. She was surrounded by her impenetrable entourage and ushered out of the building the moment we got too close. However, we caught up with Remy, whose rags to riches story was a far more positive example of Cambodian fashion, even if his brand of spy fashion wasn't exactly to my taste. I was a refugee. My parents they were held captive, you know, like, and we were escaping, like, pitch dark at night. I don't know if they crawled through barbed wires or running through, like, bushes. They, they ducked because they saw it, but I didn't duck. I was in the backpack. My face was ripped open on the, the, the this side. Yeah. The scar is still there, um, but it's a reminder everybody goes through challenges. 
and the gods wept. Fashion week was over. There was nothing particularly wrong with the fashion week. It did all the things a fashion week should do. Lights, models, guest list. But it happened in a cocoon. Fashion weeks the world over are inherently elitist. But at the very least, the general public in the West knows what a fashion week is. So there's these weird tranny children everywhere in dresses and powder on their face and lipstick. They come up to me and just go. Cambodia Fashion Week will probably continue. But as long as it's held in the shadow of a society where garment workers are beaten for protesting and mass faintings in factories are blamed on evil spirits, then it will constantly be undermined by other fashion stories hitting the headlines for the wrong reasons. Oh.